Hi and welcome to Hummingbird Acres. I am Deanne. I am the creator behind the YouTube channel and the blog Hummingbird Acres. I am so excited that you are here. Winter is finally here and I don't know if we're overly excited about it, but we are embracing this time, this season to slow down and really reflect and get some things done on the homestead. So during winter, most likely not spending a lot of time outside on the homestead, but that doesn't mean your homestead activities and chores stop or just completely go away. There are so many things that you can do during the winter to keep your homestead going and to prepare for your next homesteading season. So today we're gonna to talk about 10 things that you can do over the winter to get ready for the spring and to just keep your homestead moving forward and thriving. One of the first things that you can do in the winter to keep your homestead moving forward and thriving and to just build on your skills is to cook more and to cook more from scratch. So start digging in to those cookbooks and those your favorite recipe blog websites and finding some of those yummy recipes that you just want to try and maybe you've been putting off for a while. This is a great time to dig them out and start cooking. Not only is it going to give you nutritious food to eat, but it is also going to fill your home with wonderful smells. And because you are cooking and you're using the stove and the oven, it is also going to put extra warmth in your house and make your house a little bit more cozier. And I don't know about you, but in the summer we don't really cook a lot, a lot, because it is just too hot. So winter is, for us, the perfect time to try out some of those recipes. I also like to, in the winter, kind of like revamp or add to my freezer meal stockpile. That way, come spring and summer when the garden is thriving and I'm really busy in the garden, I don't have to worry too much about what's for dinner. I have freezer meals in the freezer that I can just pull out. So winter is a great time to stock up on those homemade freezer meals and just kind of prep for your busy spring and summer in the garden where you might not have time to cook as much. Speaking of the garden, the winter is also the perfect time for you to start planning next year's garden. So come December, January timeframe, your seed companies are going to start sending you seed catalogs to look at. So I suggest that you go through those seed catalogs, kind of put some sticky notes or mark the um, varieties and the different plants that you think you want to grow and then get your garden journal and your garden planner out and start planning your garden. If you do not have a garden journal or a garden planner, you have to check ours out. It is a game changer for keeping your garden organized and keeping everything all in one place so you know what you're growing and you can write notes about it so you can make sure that the following year you are growing things that you actually like and that you actually have success with. I will leave a link to our garden journal below for you, but once you have your seed catalogs and your garden all planned out in your garden journal, then start ordering those seeds. There's been lots of rumors lately, especially the last two or three years about seed shortages. So you really wanna make sure that you get your seeds as quickly as you can. So don't delay on planning your next year's garden. Now, I don't suggest starting your garden right away as soon as those seeds come in the mail, but getting it planned and getting prepped to start is going to get you off to a great start. A quick note on seed starting, make sure that you are not starting your seeds too early because then they're gonna get leggy and just kind of sickly and they're not going to do very well. So resist the urge to start as soon as your seeds come in. Really read the back of your seed packages and follow their recommendations. So canning is normally thought about something that happens in the late summer and the fall, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can also do a lot of your canning in the winter months when you're kind of stuck inside. One way to do this with produce and fruits and vegetables from your garden is that when you harvest them, just throw them in the freezer and then you can pull them out in the winter, thaw them out, process them and can them and then it's done. It's a really good way if you have a lot going on and you don't have time to can them, 
that is a really good way to not waste anything that you're growing in your garden. Another thing that you can do in the winter is can things that aren't in season for you right now. So the best way to explain this is with oranges. So we live in zone seven. We can't grow citrus here or we can't grow much citrus here, if anything. Um, but we still love our oranges and our mandarin oranges and the kids go through them like crazy. Well, in the winter, your mandarins and your oranges are in season in Florida. So there is a overflow of them here in zone seven. So what we do is we will stockpile, we'll buy a bunch of oranges um, and a bunch of other citruses and can them now while they're in season in Florida, can them now and then we can eat them all throughout the season. One of the favorite things for our kids to eat canned and something they love eating all the time is mandarin oranges. So on our blog, I have a recipe for how to can mandarin oranges. I'll link it below for you. It is so good and it's from scratch. It's great. You got to try it. So I'll link that below for you. But canning is not something that has to be just regulated to the late summer and the fall. You can also can in winter. And not only will you be getting food for your shelves, but you're also going to be adding heat and moisture to your house because you're cooking. I know you guys have probably heard of the saying of like your spring cleaning and your deep cleaning. And I get that spring alive, new awakening, everything is just seems fresh. Things are growing. But as homesteaders and gardeners, the spring is the time where you want to be spending as much time in your garden as possible. So doing your spring cleaning kind of gets pushed to the side. So instead of completely forgetting about it in the spring, why not move that deep clean that you would do in the spring? Move it to the winter months when you are forced inside and you are kind of forced to uh, like just spend more time. You have the time to do the deep cleaning in the winter because you have fewer chores and you have less things to do. So use the winter months to do your deep cleaning of your home. We love to clean with all natural products, essential oils, vinegars, waters. We have tons of recipes on our website for homemade cleaners that are effective and smell great, non-toxic, and you can even get the kids involved with making these cleaners and using them, which is a bonus. That's also linked below for you. So winter is the time to do your deep cleaning, not spring. Something I have been leaning really hard into this winter is making things and building my skills when it comes to sewing and mending and crocheting and knitting. I was very fortunate enough to be taught how to sew by my mom when I was very, very young. Um, so very, I feel very confident and very proficient in my sewing skills, but not so much in my knitting and crocheting skills. So this winter, I have taught myself how to crochet. So this is Hunter's blanket. This is the third one, fourth one that I have done. Um, and I have found that I really love this. This is just very relaxing for me. Um, it's a great way to like cuddle up and get warm if I'm cold. And it's just kind of very therapeutic and really good for my mindset. So crocheting is one of those things that will just keep you busy in the winter and just, yeah. If you want to see some tutorials or the tutorial that I watched in order to teach myself how to do this, now I can tell you this was not an easy skill for me to learn. It took me, it took me a little while to master this and I only know one stitch, but it's a stitch that I love and I really like and I, I, I can't count when I am knitting or crocheting. I have four kids, they are constantly running around, I'm constantly being pulled in all different directions. So I can't count. So this stitch is perfect if you can't count, or you can count, but you are just, there's too much going on for you to stay on top of counting. But this is a great stitch for it. If you guys really like this and um, you wanna know more, maybe I will do a tutorial on just how I do this, just to so show you guys how easy it is. But crocheting has been something that I have picked up this winter and I've really found that I have loved. Now, something that I'm planning on doing is come spring when it starts getting warm, crocheting is going to just be too hot for me. I can't keep this blanket on my lap in the middle of summer. I will just be sweating way too much. So what I want to do is that come 
spring and summer, I really want to get into embroidery. My grandmother used to embroider when she was younger and her eyesight was a little bit better. And I really want to pick up the skill of embroidery. I just think it's beautiful and just one of those skills that, you know, maybe I can teach my kids how to do and carry on the tradition. So leaning into sewing and crocheting and mending is another great thing to do during those winter months when you're forced inside and it's kind of cold. When we start to get that garden itch in, you know, end of January, February, when we really want to get outside in the garden and work in the garden, but it is still too cold and anything we plant will die, we kind of focus our attention on the things that we are growing inside and things we always grow inside. So our house plants. We have not a lot of house plants, but we have quite a few. And when I start to get that garden bug in the late winter, I turn my attention to my house plants. I will repot them, I will fertilize them, and just give them a good kickstart for the following year. I will also start to grow things like microgreens or some maybe indoor herbs. That just kind of satisfies my gardening bug in the winter when I just want to have my hands on the dirt. Um, so get some house plants in the late winter, early spring to help you with that garden bug. Something we do throughout the winter and throughout the summer and spring and fall, really all year long, is we work on our compost bins. During the summer and the spring when it's warmer outside, we work on our outside compost bins a lot, a lot. And then in the winter, we focus more on our worm composting bin and we keep our worm bin in the basement. We did a whole video on how we set that up. I will link that for you. But composting in the winter can be done and it gives you a jump start on your garden. So worm composting in the winter is a great activity. Um, and then taking those skills to your outside compost bin in the spring is also beneficial. Okay, I think I have completely lost count of where I am and how many tips I am giving you guys for things you can do in winter. So I'm going to give you just a couple of more. I might have gone over 10. I can't remember, but so be it. If you want more ideas, visit our website. We have tons of inspiration there for you to build your homestead. Um, something else that I love to do in winter is to curl up with a good book and a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate and just sit by the fire and read. And I'm going to share with you guys two of the books that I am diving into this winter. And the first one is The First Time Homesteader by Jessica Sowards. Um, great author. I've read both of her books now. Um, this is a great book for beginning homesteaders and will definitely help you if you are looking to start homesteading. Um, the next one is The Independent Farmstead by Sean and Beth Doherty. Do 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 um, this one was recommended by Justin Rhodes. Um, I just kind of loved, like I saw a YouTube with them, and just kind of loved their philosophy and their mindset on things, so I thought that this one would be a great book to read. I have not read this yet or dived into this yet. I'm still working on the Homesteader one, but another one that I'm really looking forward to reading in the upcoming months. Now is also the time for you to take inventory on your tools and your gardening supplies. Check them out. What's broken, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be mended, what maybe needs to just be replaced. In the winter, you know, you have your really, really cold days, but you'll have a few days here and there where the temperatures aren't that bad and you can spend some time outside fixing and mending your tools and getting them ready for the following season. Believe me, by doing this now, you are going to save yourself so much time in the spring and you're going to be able to just hit the ground running when it comes to setting up your garden, working in your garden, or any projects that you have around your homestead. If your tools and things are in good working order and they're organized, winter is a great time to spend some time organizing your, really anything, your house, your farm, your homestead, organization and keeping things in one place they have a place they have a home that way anytime you need them you know where they are and you're saving so much time than searching for something like if i need a battery i know exactly where the batteries are i am not going to waste 30 minutes searching for a battery because i know exactly where they are while you're organizing and you're fixing things and mending things if you find something is low Add it to your list so that the next time you run to the store, you can pick it up. 
That way you're never running out and when it comes time to do a project, you have all the materials that you need to get that project done. Winter's a great time to do this and maybe, you know, you kind of lost track of it in the spring and the summer, which is fine. It happens to all of us, but use the winter to get back on track so that you can start your next season with a bang. Besides cooking and trying out some new recipes and making some freezer meals, Winter is also a great time to work on your bread making skills. Um, I have a great soft sourdough sandwich bread recipe that you should try out. Um, learn to make bread in the winter. Your house will smell good. Your house will be warm. Winter is also great to learn how to ferment things. Um, when you're fermenting, you don't want things to be too hot. <laughs> so winter is a great time to do that because you can control the temperature a little bit more. Um, you can try making cheeses. That's another great thing to do in the winter, along with making yogurt. Another great thing. So learn how to make some of those staple things that you can start to build into your weekly routine. Then come summer, you can continue them because you kind of already have that like momentum going. And then you'll always have fresh yogurt and fresh bread for meals and snacks. The last thing that I want to leave you with on things that you can get done around your homestead to stay busy and productive this winter is to set some homesteading goals. Setting goals and creating action steps is what is going to move you forward on your homestead. I go into a lot of detail in, on this on how to do it in our Turning Your Homestead Dreams and Goals into a reality. It is an ebook. Um, it goes, it's going to walk you through exactly how to set a goal, break that goal down into actionable steps, and how to take action on those goals. You know, we can't move forward with anything until we have action. And in order to do that, you need something that's going to keep you accountable and keep you organized. So set those homesteading goals, set those action steps, and get to work. Winter's a great time to do this. If you need more help, send me an email. I'd love to help you out. But Set those homesteading goals so that your next homesteading season can be your best season yet. If you need more inspiration, head on over to our website, www.hummingbird-acres.com. Check out our eBooks, lots of them over there to help you get your homestead started and even give you some inspiration for your own homestead. And if you have a question, send me an email. I love helping you guys get your homestead started and answering your questions. So thanks so much for hanging out with us today and we will talk to you soon.